what you're doing is you're trying to work with a material that you can't touch. So for me, with the, the draw to the material, I think was, I think just the perceived danger of it, the heat, the fire, the, the it was so unlike anything else. You know, with, with drawing, you could draw and then walk away from it. With clay, you can you know, mo you know, shape it and walk away from it. And glass, it was like, you're stuck. You're stuck making the piece until it's over. And it's an activity that is always pushing you to do better. You know, you earn your space at the glassblower's bench. I kind of made it my point to do as much as I could with the material and study with as many people. And that was really kind of the beginning for me in making uh, my own work, my own voice, really. I want to make just, I want to make people happy. I want to make them look at something and go like, that's beautiful. I'm really trying to give the glass my voice, not just its own. I want the piece to, to be a surprise every time the person sees it. A group of people in Waipaho wanted to preserve the plantation lifestyle. And this is a result, the plantation village. So it's a architectural history of what plantation lifestyle was like also the social history and it shows the history of the common people you know people like you and I our lifestyle and how we preserve or how we make history when you think about Hawaii today our multi-ethnicity and the tolerance really began during the plantation era so that is really our thrust to show that people came to work in sugar you know, lived within the environment, but brought their culture with them. So they shared their culture, they borrowed from one another, and they adapted to the life. And hopefully, as the visitor goes through, they have that same feeling. You can't thread a loom in a single class period. I hadn't done it before, so I had to learn how I would, I was, what I was doing as I was doing it. And I sat down, and at the first couple of shots, I was overcome with the feeling of being at home. I felt like I could express myself, that I felt was important somehow. In my mind, I saw a door opening. And what I saw through this open door was an unexplored landscape of weaving. In art, and weaving particularly, I found that I, it would take every ounce of creativity I could pour into it. Art has allowed me to be and do things that I would have never had the opportunity to do. It's like having love in your life. It's, it's my version of risky behavior. <laughs> The driving concept was a Hawaiian sense of place. There's 19 unique perspectives on Hawaii. Every artist brought his own mana'o, his own ideas, and came to it from his direction. And they're so different. In fact, walking through there with the engineers, they have their specific ones they like the most. You walk with the art people, oh, they love this one. Everyone is different and every piece is a different material. There's no two alike. I don't think there's anything like it. There was pressure to have outside artists come and do you know, icing on the cake, but we were able to keep it only Hawaii artists, and I think that adds to its integrity too. It's a real good example of Hawaii and how artists interpret Hawaii's beauty. My name's Suzanne Wolf, and I'm a professor of art at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. I think that there is something special about ceramics. We still easily find ways to relate to each other in terms of this common love that we have. The East-West Ceramics Collaboration started in 1995. The first program was in 1995. And it consisted of a group of faculty members from Taiwan, Japan, Korea, and two places in the mainland United States. And we had a four-week workshop where the students and the faculty exchanged ideas about ceramics. They talked about their ceramic traditions and how they influence contemporary work in, in their own particular country. I hope that this could be a model for other programs and for other people to get together in the same way. And I think this is so important because it opens up your mind. I 
begin with a photograph. So the photographs are kind of like something I take off from. It later takes a life of its own in the painting. Through the process of painting self-portraits for a long time, my images began to shift. And it wasn't until maybe a couple of years ago where I started to scrape back from the heavy paintings. And then I kind of slowly started to understand and appreciate a different kind of visual language. I never wanted these pictures to really look like me. So um, in a sense, I wasn't so defined by a certain image. I don't think I've ever wanted to display myself as a person in the literal context, but I've always wanted to kind of portray a sense of my own being. So that's kind of where I start my real full-blown study of self-portraiture. I just keep painting and painting and see what happens. What do you do when you're an artist? So after, uh, after art school, well, I started to paint. And uh, I think part of my success as a painter is that I was very prolific in the old days. Being a full-time artist is uh, reinventing yourself constantly and exploring and uh, experimenting constantly. There's always a curiosity of where I can take the image and build it up. I usually just dive in it. I don't, you know, get my foot wet. I kind of jump in the water and see what happens. I always say to my students, it takes you 15 years, and, but you have to put in the time. You, you have to work every day. Uh, a writer writes, a painter paints. So you're going to paint every day. And you have to set a set discipline. I think creativity helps creativity. The more you do, the more you find yourself doing it. So this is, this is the place for me. When I'm doing these, I just try to um, create a uh, simple and uh, sort of quiet uh, graphic, if you will. I kind of try to do everything by feel, and it is for me uh, like a found object. It's not the direct kind of gaze. There are certain kinds of experiences that allow a directness of, of personal gaze. It's something that you can make into your own, you know. They always talk about the space of, of the work, and I, I think that's, that's good enough, you know. <laughs> that's good enough for me, because when they look at it, um, it draws them in, but then they can make that their own.